I gotta be honest, I missed it. When we were, you know, taking our break, um, obviously Deron and I, we've been doing a lot of planning, a lot of reorganizing. So don't forget to like, subscribe, um, comment, make sure to follow us on our Instagram as well too, at New Block Nerds Podcast. We got a lot of exciting topics for you guys coming up. A lot of uh, special guests that we got coming on talking about a couple of different things. We're we're kind of yeah. getting out of our comfort zone with a couple of things too. Yeah. So um we're we're just we're just really excited you know about about the future slate of the podcast and you know we couldn't be happier with you know coming back um for episode 50 um Mm -hmm. i felt like this was this was the time to come back right at episode 50 so um anyways getting into today's topic we're gonna we're gonna touch on something that i feel like a lot about i feel like it's not something that is like big in the fandom and it's a shame because it's really really good i mean if you guys have never heard of the netflix animated show super crooks so super crooks is a production that is i guess it's based kind of loosely based on the um feature film jupiter's legacy Mm -hmm. um which I have never seen, I'll admit. Now I want to kind of want to see it um, since it's connected to this, but um, came out a few years ago. Wasn't super well received. I feel like it didn't make a whole lot of money, but um, it's based on, um, I think, a comic book, Duran, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Miller World. So Miller World is a comic book. He's a creator that made a deal with Netflix, and his content was basically turned over to live action and animation. Jupiter Legacy was supposed to be like the Justice League of that particular series. Um, I think they messed up by going live action first, did not do the animation way. A lot of fans didn't really care for it, so Super Crooks kind of like was a sleeper. They didn't like, ah, that one's bad. I don't want to watch that. But Super Crooks is a banger, bro. It is something. It really is. Watch. It really is. It's insane. And and you know something, Deron, like like when, when me and you talked about kind of watching this because you i think you were maybe like halfway through season one yeah and you texted me and you were like bro you you gotta check this out you gotta check this out so i was like all right yeah i'll, I'll watch it um right after i feel like episode one mm-hmm. i was like oh i'm i love this premise so for those of you who don't know um and we are going to get into a little bit of spoilers here so here is your warning if you guys want to go check out super crooks on netflix and then come back and check this out here's your warning um but Basically, the premise is, I mean, it's in the title, it's Super Crooks. And yeah. instead of it being about superpower beings going out there doing good in the same vein of like a Justice League or your classic kind of like comic book story arc, it's about this boy at the beginning named Johnny who discovers that he has electrical powers. Um, and he's he lives in a world where, you know, there are already superheroes, there's already supervillains. Um, and so, you know, he's your typical kind of like high school nerd and he gets these powers. Um, and instead of becoming a superhero, he has aspirations of becoming a super villain. But he um, tried, bro. He tried. He tried. So he first, did try. Like everybody know the first episode, it will definitely leave you like, all right, this is your traditional trope for a, a young Young man, his friend, they got training. They want to be a superhero. They love to see on TV. Like, this is a universe where superheroes are popular. They are the movie stars. Everybody wants to be them. There's different coasts, everything like that. And the powers are from the first superheroes, which is the Jupiter legacy. It's passed down from the generation to generation. So we don't know who his father is. All we know is that he has aspirations of being a superhero. And things go left to the point where he's like, yeah, this is not gonna work. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a crook. <laughs> and I was not expecting that for the first episode at all. Yeah, no, and I and I think it's I think like the premise of it is is very fresh. It's very unlike anything that that we've gotten mm-hmm. um recently. I would say as far as the animation, if I had to compare it to something, it would be like in the same vein of like invincible as far as as far as like content and as far as tone um there's a lot of blood and gore in this this is definitely not something for children at whatsoever all. no kids um, please no kids just be a teenage or adult parent supervision do not watch this if you're a child 
No, no, it, there, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of bad shit in this. Um, <laughs> but it's it's so great because you get to follow, you know, Johnny and his crew of, you know, criminals, and it's one of those, it's one of those story arcs where you're rooting for the bad guys, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I guess you're kind of rooting for the bad guys because they're going up against a lot of people who are even worse than they are. Um, but Heroes. it's, it's, so I want to jump ahead just a little bit because I feel like season one was really good, but season two just like ups the ante something crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so there are a couple of like legendary supervillains in this world that everyone knows about. Mm-hmm. Johnny has this bright idea or no, it wasn't even Johnny. It was the heat who had this bright idea to steal from the most legendary supervillain of all time called the bastard. Yes. His name is the bastard. now this guy's name is the bastard. And let me tell you, he is a bastard because his power is essentially, you remember um, the, the Congresswoman from the boys. Absolutely. Bro. When can, I like, saw that, I can, like, like blow yo. people's heads up. Right with like her mind. That's that that is the bastard's power. We gotta do some research because I'm curious to find out which character was created first. Because those powers are very, very similar. And I didn't think about it until like literally just now we were mm-hmm. talking about it. like I never made that connection, but they essentially have the same power. Yes. Um, so I mean the bastard is like he's like the kingpin of the underworld here and a supervillain underworld here. Um, and so they have this bright idea to gather a crew of super crooks um, and basically do a heist on the bastard. And there's a lot of twists and turns in it. I think the writing is great. The pacing is great. The action's great. Some of the twists in it are great. Um, Deron, like for you, like watching this, because again, I, I got a lot of like, similarities to like even like the boys um and like we said previously invincibleness like how did you feel just kind of like just like going through this journey with them well like you had like hit on just like towards there's one of the heights there's other heights in there we're not going to tell you guys everything that happened to get them to that point um the max prison but having security guards like the the knowledge of trading, getting favors of like, yo, they got parties going on in prison. That's how powerful this man is outside in the underground. Um, the casinos are involved. You have the good Casey girlfriend, like, yo, you don't want to do this. We're trying to live right. Let's do things the right way. Then you got the friends, the misfits, like, yo, Johnny boy, let's go and do have some fun. Let's go to rob some banks. Let's do things that we normally do because we're super crooks. And just the vibe, like you said, was invincible. Absolutely. I just, it's, definitely adult content versus like the graphic of the animation um but the storytelling i think was very very good and it's also like not that long of an animation it's like i think like 13 or 16 episodes i forgot the zach's count of it but it's not that long um you when you sit down and watch this you're gonna watch it the whole time you're not going to turn it off um also personal opinion theme music top 10 theme music of most animations they're like I don't. Am I skipping it? I'm rocking to it when it comes on. I don't know how you feel about it, yeah. but I am listening to it the entire time. No, I I enjoy it too. I feel like like the music like definitely sets the tone. Like it's there. Like the stakes are definitely very high because yes. everyone's lives are in danger. But they do it in such like a a cool kind of like carefree way, and it's even like the tone is even like you said like even in the the opening music like it's very much just like I mean you got like Casey and Johnny kind of like dancing in the intro. It's kind of just like you know, like this. This is what we do, bro. Like we don't, sure. we don't know how to be good. We just, our version of good is just stealing from people who are even worse scumbags than yes. we are. And the heroes um, in this are not your traditional heroes. That chose they chose two people that between Gladiator and Patreon. They have questionable backgrounds. So when this is a public world where the superheroes, like I said, they are like the movie stars. So things they do in the public matters. It's like a betting on whose power is going to show up for this or all these kind of things. Like this is a public event when the superheroes come. So even the police have a list of uh, superheroes that are available to come and like, help you with dispatch. That's how insane this world is. So they even think that you were going to be like a 
hey, I'm gonna go rob somebody. It's like insane to even think that, but you're being nice right. about it. Like, yeah, we're gonna just rob some banks. No big deal. We're gonna steal some things from Super. Like, it's just a lot. And I love the stakes of being consequences. Like everyone, like if you did something, you coming back to pay for that later on. Yeah. Yeah. No question and, and, yeah. Ask. <laughs> so, and, and, and just like you said, like, I, I feel like their version of the Justice League, I forget what, what their actual title is in the show. Um, the League of... Uh, I, I'm, go ahead, Bob, it's I, like the League of Justice or yeah. something like that. But they're, I mean, they're more aligned with the boys, the seven, than they are anything else, right? Yes. Um, very, very superpowered beings. They, they don't have a whole lot of mercy for the people that they encounter with. Um, usually the people that they fight end up they end up, let's just say they end up not committing crimes ever again. Um, and like you said, one of the most compelling characters for me in this whole thing was one of the villains who is part of that Philadelphia Justice one. League is Praetorian. Pra- Praetorian, even girl. though even though I feel like because of the bastard's power, he's so much more scary than Praetorian. Mm-hmm. Praetorian has this he has this almost like bloodlust that makes him so unsettling. Like yes. he enjoys chasing down villains and taking zero mercy on them. Like he yep. enjoys it. And what makes it even crazier is that his superpower is basically he has like a deck of cards and any any new card that he draws he manifests a different superpower. Yes. So, so like, well, for example, like, everything. Right. So, like, I mean, and it could be anything from teleportation to super strength to flight to shooting lasers out of his eyes to all kinds of things, right? So, my Pokemon fans, if you guys have ever played, like, Pokemon on a Game Boy, there was this move that a Pokemon could learn called Metronome, yes. right? And you basically, when you when you hit Metronome, like, you basically use any kind of Pokemon move at random. So it could be Fire Blast, it could be Light Screen, it could be Earthquake, it could be Hyper Beam. That's basically Praetorian's power. So we, he even he doesn't know what his next power is going to be. So every time he shows up and you you get that sense of dread when Praetorian first shows up and the criminals who are doing, who are doing the bank heist or whatever, they're all like oh, oh shit. Oh shit, Praetorian's here. Why is he here? We're all going to die. Yes. And they all just, like, a lot of times they don't even attempt to even, like, try to fight him initially. They try to just run from him because they know what he's about. And he's yes. not here. He, he does not show up with handcuffs, guys. And that is why, like, we're not going to tell the ending. But, like, you got to rewatch this twice because you see the – they planted the seeds on why things are important, why certain characters were introduced at certain times. And you don't really get the full conclusion – like the ending, I told you in a text. I'm like, "Yo, bro, I, they got my feelings." Like, I thought something happened. It really yeah. didn't happen. I thought, "Like, yo, what happened? Is what's going on here?" I was, I was like, really upset for a moment. And um, that's when you love a show when like you get invested into it. When they have your emotions, like you on TV, like, "Yo, you bugging? What you doing?" All these things came out in this particular series. And if, oh man, I hope to come back out another one. I really do. I do too. I really but do. I, I think. And without getting into end game spoilers here of, yeah. of how of how it how season two ends, um, it, it seems like they they really put a bow on things, but not with them. Just Jupiter Legacy, like I want them to like this universe. Yeah, I want to see that. Yeah, like I like I I I so desperately want so much more from yes. this world that they've built that the, like, like they've sucked me into. Yeah. Um, but to go back to what you were saying about like the twists and turns. Mm-hmm. So just to give you guys additional context, our main character, Johnny, who has the, elect- who has the electric powers, mm-hmm. his girlfriend, Casey, we don't learn until kind of like probably what, midway through season one, that she has powers as well. I thought that she didn't have any powers because she was always like mm-hmm. trying to get him to not do criminal stuff, to like live a normal life. They show some of her powers in episode one, but you don't know the how strong she really is right right yeah. right so her power is basically she can cast illusions so 
<laughs> with I don't want to give anything away. Okay, it's not, it's not, it's, just leave there. Just, just let you know this girl is just bad person. It's, like it's it's so amazing. good. It's it's so good because it, it's it's like one of those um it's like one of those scenarios where like when you're watching you're not, not entirely sure what's real and what's not. Yes. When you're dealing with yes. her, which is what makes it so much so much more compelling because you're like Oh shit! This crazy thing just happened. But, but wait, Casey was was there. So, did that really happen? The way that it happened, and she's or? the one with the moral compass. So when you like, mm-hmm. that makes you believe in more. That nah, that didn't really happen. That's just Casey. She gotta make sure y'all straight in their life. Y'all over here, these knuckleheads. And then we didn't even talk about how there's like a, a syndicate of different crime bosses that actually control the percentage of the crimes. And that if you want to be a freelance person and do your own stuff, you gotta pay a percentage. And how that can become right. complicated. It's man, this was too short in my opinion. Well, it was great. It was right for sticking my teeth in, but it's mm-hmm. I want more, bro. I, I just want more. Yeah. Like, I just I actually want to go into the comic book store and buy this comic. I want to support this comic. I want to I'm gonna hit the people out there, write this stuff. I just want to support them. This is awesome. Oh, definitely. Like, like this is definitely something that I feel like deserved more eyes on it than it got. Yeah. For for sure. I feel like hopefully now that it's on netflix and people can go back and watch it, i do feel like it's it's a little bit more digestible as an animation than it is a live action yep. um but jupiter's legacy aside if netflix announced that they were doing a live action super crooks like the same thing but in live action i'd be i'd be totally in for it i'd it's, be totally in for it's it. so doable it is mm-hmm. so doable like there's some characters like yo they not gonna be gonna pull this off. The One Piece one they did, but there's most of them who failed by the wayside. Super mm-hmm. Crooks is the perfect element, and the characters can happen. And it's ooh, that mm, I, that's good. That's that's really and, good. And, you, and you and you know something like now that we're on that subject, I do think coming off the heels of Marvel's MCU and you know it, it being a particular tone. I do think there is a desire for more stuff in the vein of Invincible, uh, the boys, yes. um, you know, those kinds of things. Not not saying I'm not trying to put the label on like, oh, we get it's gotta be dark and gritty and blah blah blah. No, no, I'm not saying that. But in the same vein, like like you mentioned earlier, consequences of like, you know, not everyone is safe, right? Like it's it's a little bit more realistic as far as okay, if we were shooting this in like a live action, even I mean animated or, or otherwise if this is a world that we're building as if it's mirrors our own world mm-hmm. what would that look like really i mean everyone's not going to make it to the end you get what i'm saying like yeah and and that's and that's what i like about some of these shows is that there are those consequences like we talked about you know way back in our iron blooded orphans mm-hmm. um review which just like yeah things may not there are some beloved characters that maybe don't make it, but that is that's how shit goes sometimes, right? And I it's think so I, I think that bro. Right. Right. That that's the thing I think that grounds it more is just is is making sure that you know everything is not all butterflies and rainbows all the time. And yeah. I'm not saying that it again, I'm not saying that everything has to be dark and everything has to be gritty and somber and there can't be any happy endings. It's not what we're saying, but there, there's got to be some kind of a healthy balance there. And the thing I go also about this, and like, I know the writer's strikes happening and a lot of things like that. I'm not sure if animation films fall under that. So they may still be able to bring out more content like this because it's not using live actors. I'm not sure how that works because the most material is already written as off of the comic books. So it's interesting to see what's going to move forward if we're actually going to get more animations now because of all the strikes going on. Um, I Invincible set the bar. Invincible set the bar. Uh, Amazon Prime set the bar because they had Villain Saga and they had Invincible, and it made the people who love animation that was in that gap where man, that's kind of I don't know, it's kind of G rated to like, yo, this is real. Like, I want that Mortal Kombat type vibe. I, I want that, and that's what I got. So Netflix going this route, smart move, smart smart move, especially on top of that. What's your? You don't really have any expectations. It is going to catch fire if it doesn't. Okay, let's move on. No one really heard about it. 
So it's uh, I man, you gotta watch this. Everybody here, like, just go on Netflix and watch this. Watch one episode. Come back and comment below and let us know how you felt when it's all yeah. concluded. Come back, comment again, and let me know how you feel then because it's gonna be different than how it first started. It's totally different. This show, yeah, no, I. Yeah, no, I I agree. You know what what you said about Netflix. I do think like they are in a position, especially with some of these live action animes. Um, in addition to some of their more obscure animations, like a Super Crooks, um, I do think they have the ability to kind of carve out a little bit of a niche in the market that has not been tapped into. I mean, people have tried and they failed, um, Netflix included. But I, I do think. I respect them for kind of swinging for the fences with some with some of this IP. Like I, I really, really do. Um, especially something like, and I don't want to get off topic here, but especially something like One Piece, where it's, it's such a beloved anime, and they chose to make it live action even after all the backlash of like the Cowboy Bebop, the Death Notes, yep. um, you know, all those kind of failed live action projects that were not received well. I think. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm looking forward to them leaning more into stuff like this. You know what I mean? Something yeah. that's not part of the big two, the DC Marvel. That's that's kind of outside of those universes that people can afford to be a little bit more creative with. So um, there's a lot of creative yeah. I mean, there. there's a lot of stuff that we don't know about that. Like, like for instance, everyone knows Marvel and DC. Go to your local combo shops and look for IDW. Look for there's other ones, Dark Horse Comics. There is Image. Mm-hmm. There's other. They got some heavy hitters out there with a lot of great content. Last Ronin, we're gonna talk about that one day. Like there's some stuff out there yeah. that just people need to know about. Yeah, no, I, I agree, man. I, and you know, again, like you said, uh, this is something that I feel like people should definitely give a chance. If you guys really like um, the tone of like Invincible, the boys, you guys should definitely check this out. If you guys like that stuff. You will love Super Crooks, I yes. promise you. Go check it out. Watch an episode or two. If you don't like it, feel free to come back and comment and tell us the shit was trash. But <laughs> we would never steer you guys wrong. Go check it out. Let us know what you guys think. Um, Deron, you got anything else? Man, happy 50th and let's rock, bro. Like We we talked about this a long time ago. We actually just went for it. We had 50 already. Man, I can't wait. Wait. Yeah, it's 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 wild, man. How how quickly we got to fifty. Yeah. It is it is kind of wild. It feels like we just like we just started this, but <laughs> you know, I feel like we're you know we're we're no longer novices in this game. Maybe we are. Maybe some people will still call us novices, but that's cool. <laughs> we're having fun with it. Um, we love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with us for fifty episodes so far. Cheers to fifty more. I've been Prince Duran. It's a pleasure as always, bro. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace and love. Go watch the show. <laughs>